Hello, everybody. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to, uh, to another edition of In Pit Lane. That really confused me, because as you can see, we've got something new has been added, and I don't function well when anything new has been added. I'm a creature of habit. Yes, it's uh, the final edition of In Pit Lane live in the studio, anyway, for season 2017, in the brand new studio, which we didn't manage to go to air last week. I trust that we're to air. In fact, we're sort of compensating for that. There you are. You can see already that there's another, there's a problem. Um, we, we, have, we have black. That black was brought to you by the Acme Black Company. If you're looking for the best black, remember, contact Acme Black. Now, uh, coming up on the program, over the weekend, the first, uh, the first Newcastle 500 was held. It looked fantastic. We're going to talk to Dave Stillwell about that in a moment. I'm hoping we'll have some news later on because we've moved into this new studio. And there's still lots and lots of teething problems. And one of the teething problems tonight, apart from the fact that we've been streaming for the last one and a half bloody hours, is that um, is, is the news hasn't ingested that ingested is a technical term. Um, if you study for many, many years at the university, you'll in, you'll find out what ingested means. It's a, I mean, there's a whole there's a whole unit on ingestion, and I'm not making that up. There is, in fact, a whole unit on ingestion. There you are, something to look forward to, kiddies. Now, because we don't have any news, we might as well go straight to uh, to Dave Stillwell, who, like I said, Newcastle first meeting there. It looked fantastic from what I saw on the television, but as I said, Dave still was there. And uh, Dave, tell us from your point of view, first of all, what, what were your first impressions? Uh, first impression, I can actually, I can sum up the entire weekend in one word. Wow. Like, seriously, wow. For a first event, you know, as much flack as supercars often cops for, you know, the manner in which they can conduct their business or... The fact that we're going street racing rather than a permanent circuit. I know there's a lot of grassroots and you know hardcore motorsport fans out there that appreciate permanent circuits. But the whole point of supercars is to attract tourism dollars and deliver events. These are no longer races, they're events. And as an event in Newcastle, boy did they tick the boxes on this one. You know, that that footage from the choppers flying overhead, basically Australia's Monaco. You could, you could explain it that way. The boats parking up, the tugboats pulling doughies out in the channel, uh, people hanging off the balconies, cheering on their favourite drivers. You know, that, that east end of the city really got, uh, got behind it. I know that there was some unrest with the residents. I think supercars, the new, uh, Newcastle City Council uh, and the, the emergency services worked really, really hard to mitigate all of those factors. And I think they delivered, you know, at or above their expectations. You know, I think uh, Richard Crail uh, from uh, Race Talk Media said that, you know, on a lot of street racing events, they'll often quote a crowd figure around 180,000 and will say, oh, I think you might be stretching that a bit. His attitude to this one was, I reckon if you quoted 180,000, I reckon you're underestimating quite a bit. I think the final crowd figure was somewhere north of 190,000. Uh, you know, to get, you know, north of 50,000 people on a Friday for a supercars event where it was all practice and qualifying, no racing. Huge, huge delivery. Um, you know, spectacular on-track action, pretty much every championship going down to the final race to be decided. Super, uh, Supercars Championship, Dunlop Super 2, the uh, last of the V8 Utes, the last of the Holden Commodore format in Utes, uh, Stevie Johnson picking up his first championship win in Touring Car Masters. Uh, obviously, the Toyota 86 racing series was, was wrapped up already. Cameron Hill with another dominant performance with three race wins. Uh, Aussie Racing Cars down to the last race. Uh, you know, action aplenty, and it was packed from Friday morning. You know, officials' briefing was at six to six thirty in the morning, and already the line was you know out past the support paddocks for people waiting to get in. So uh, a huge thank you to Newcastle, uh, to all the people of Newcastle. Thank you for having us in your city. Uh, you know, to Supercars, thank you for putting on a fantastic event. To IEDM, the engineering team behind it, all the emergency services, to all the volunteers. Uh, you really kicked this one straight out of the park. I continue to use football metaphors. Uh, this is the start of a great era for Newcastle and I think a fantastic way to wrap up the season for supercars. Uh, indeed, the Australian motorsport season uh, going forward. It's, a, it's certainly a lot more glamorous. I mean, I had, in all the years of having the, the, the grand final at Homebush in Sydney, I had not the slightest intention of ever going to see that. Didn't interest me at all. And to be honest with you, Newcastle didn't interest me at all. I, I had no intention of going. But, you know, having watched 
that coverage, I actually thought, you know, like, geez, that's, uh, I'm, I'm surprised. That's a re it's a really nice looking town. Lovely beaches by the look of it. We know they do some great wine and everything in that, in that region. And I was actually, I was interested in possibly going there. Now that's, that, the proof is in the pudding. The, and I don't mean during a supercar, I would like to go on another occasion. And I think that you're going to get people like that who are going to say that. Well, I don't want to go with all of the crowds. I don't want to go with all the noise and all the rest of it. But gee, I wouldn't mind having. I wouldn't mind going down there. And that's precisely the reason why supercars engage in, engages with regional centres. And I think Roland Dane, in a recent interview on Inside Supercars, so credit to uh, Craig Gravel and Tony Whitlock for that interview. I think it was on Sunday night. You could hear the cheering in the background. Uh, made the point that our future as a sport uh, is in Heartland Australia, in regional centres. You look at the success. Of, of Townsville, you know the fact that we've done eight years in that of that event. Sorry, uh, nine years of that event. Yeah, um, you know we did had eight years at Homebush that was not really a success. Sydney, for whatever reason, they can't even attract people to any of the regularly scheduled rugby league games. You know where anything over twenty thousand is a massive night, with the exception of State of Origin, which I have no idea how that makes sense. It's three games that mean nothing, but then they get a hundred thousand people turn up for it. Yeah, it's, it's a different world uh, but then, up there. But then <laughs> Supercars has got, you know, it's got major events in all of the all of the states. It is the the, only, the country's one true national sport in that sense. Uh, well, you know, apart from cricket and tennis. And yeah, I'd, I'd like, like, like to see cricket being played in um, in in Darwin in the middle of um, any season. To be honest, they'd be quite moist. Uh, but I think you know the success of Supercars at Bathurst. Again, it's a separate situation. But the success of Townsville, the success of of Newcastle. And I have to say, it's a massive success this year. Uh, I think looking going forward, there's been rumours, you know, from Rockhampton and other city centres. Uh, you know, Canberra was a test case. I think the, you know the event in Hamilton, New Zealand, kind of proved the point that you know that they could do an event, they could make it small scale, they could make it work. Uh, and I think that's really the future. That you know, as the supercars becomes a travelling circus, so to speak, when it rolls into town, there's a huge buzz. It draws a lot of people, like yourself, who've said. Gee, I never would have considered going to that place, but I go there and I see the footage and, oh, I can do this, this, this and this. Uh, in fact, my friend Lachlan Mansell, his father celebrated his 57th both birthday recently. Happy birthday, Greg. You're not a young guy. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a very spry young man. Uh, look, we visited a, a small Spanish restaurant um, in the east of Newcastle. Uh, they said, look, they were expecting a few more people, but because of where they were situated, they probably didn't get the foot traffic. There were other venues that reported very high levels of foot traffic or a different kind of business. You know, there were uh, licensed venues that would sell a lot lot more uh, beverages but not so much food you know punters stopping in maybe one or two beers on the way back from the racetrack uh, huge kudos to the coordination of the public transport situation that was very well handled bussing people in and out uh, you know but you know I, I would have never thought of going to Townsville until I went for the supercars last year uh, and seeing you know how you know Townsville you know hashtag Townsville shines uh, I think hashtag Newcastle glimmers I think should be trending on uh, on Twitter right now um, you know, but as I was saying, Lachlan Mansell's father said, you know, he went up for a couple of days, you know, went through the wine region in the Hunter. Uh, Newcastle is the gateway to the, the Hunter region. There's a huge number of things completely not related to motorsport, where if you're a, a couple or a family where some of you are motorsport engaged and some of you aren't, you could turn this into a weekend or a week away, a beautiful time of year for weather, not too hot, not too cold. It's easily accessible from Sydney, uh, you know, a little bit over an hour uh, up on the uh, New South Wales public transport system, you know, it's electrified train the whole way. Um, and that's one thing that I think that, you know, like you, you don't realise, it's a bit like Geelong here. I mean, people, exactly. sort, of, people sort of say, oh, Geelong, it's a long, long way away, but it, it's, it's quicker to get from An Melbourne to bit. Geelong than it is to get from Melbourne to bloody Dandenong or Hampton Park, so, or mm. Hallam, so, Well, Geelong's you know. an interesting example that you mentioned. There have been rumours yeah, about for Geelong, you know, rumbling along. I think when you consider that that would require a reasonably major investment from the state government, the state government's major commitment to motorsport in this country is obviously the MotoGP at Phillip Island and, of course, the, uh, the Rolex Formula One Australian Grand Prix at Albert Park, which, again, magnificent event. And then for supercars for next year, huge yeah. changes for that event, championship points on the line, longer races, pit stops, working hand-in-hand -hand with Liberty Media. I think we've kind of got the motorsport situation dialled in Victoria, but it'll be interesting to see what happens when the inevitable demise of Sandown occurs, uh, what kind of fills that space for something in, in Victoria? Because that would only leave us with uh, Winton, Phillip Island and, of course, the Grand Prix. Uh, and that's the thing. We were this time last week, or a bit earlier than this time last week, we were at Parliament House for the launch of the, uh, the Mildura Motorsport Precinct. And you can watch that on the Inpit Lane YouTube channel. You can that most of that, most of that presentation. Also, our interviews with Mark Scaife and, uh, and, and Glenn Milne from the, from the Mildura City Council. And... 
that's obviously something that they're working on at the moment. Now, Mildura is a, is a long, long way away. I mean, it's about, you know, it's, it's, it's not exactly just jumping your car for a quick run, but they are sort of working. And, and the thing is, that these regional cities are now eventually starting to wake up to the fact they're looking at the success of places like Bathurst, even Phillip Island. When you look across a year... I'd even, you know, I'd even mention, you know, look at the success of the Morgan Park precinct just outside of Warwick. You know, so Warwick is Eugene and Rocco did half, raise that last week. Yeah, two years. Uh, sorry, hour and a half. Hour and a half to two years. Hour and a half to two hours out southwest of Brisbane, two hours west west of the Gold Coast. Again, in a fairly densely populated area of southeast Queensland, uh, Cam's national level racing circuit that has featured on the Shannon's Nationals in the past. Again, probably a bit. Uh, a bit smaller or, or less fully featured than Wakefield Park. So not exactly geared up to do the high level national events, maybe like Australian GT uh, or the Supercars Championship, but perfect for club, state or smaller national level events. We had the improved production nationals there, uh, you know, the Q Sports Car Endurance Series visits there every now and again. Uh, they run great events there, but that's in a precinct that it's outside of town. It's it's kept away from the noise. They've got it's... the drag strip, uh, the dirt karting, dirt bikes. It's even next to an equestrian facility. So they keep the noisy stuff and the smelly stuff all together in one point out of town and uh, knowing um, Eve Stocks as I do on the uh, the regional council there uh, it's a huge boon for the you know just getting people yeah, well, in weekend after weekend because it's not just the major events it's the driver training and it's the club days and it's the well, what you what you Dean was saying la last week and with, with the launch was that the uh, they are now in a position where they're actually saying we are going we, we need to expand and we need to start putting on more full-time staff because we just can't keep up and as you say it's not a huge multi-billion dollar sort of it's not like a tail and Ben thing, which is going to be fantastic in itself, but you know, as you say, it's it's grassroots motorsport, um, and it's just taken off like nobody's business. Yeah, and again, we're we're running out of venues yeah. or available days at venues. Uh, you know, full credit to the Lynn Fox Group and their management of the Phillip Island circuit. It's basically booked out every day of the week. Uh, you know, from January through to December, uh, on top of you know manufacturer testing days, drive day opportunities, product launches. You'll see a lot of filming there. Uh, Holden Special Vehicles doing testing there, as well as Holden and Ford. Obviously, that might dial back a little bit with the out, with the uh, outgoing of, of production. Uh, but on top of that, you know, Winton is booked out almost every week or weekend. You know, that's where the supercars do their testing. Uh, Calder, obviously, as a facility, is not kind of spec'd up to handle that kind of eventing anymore. Uh, but again, but it's still very, still very still, busy. Still very still, busy. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you know, when you consider that Mildura is, it's okay, it's four hours or so from Melbourne, but you've got Swan Hill, you've got Echuca, uh, you know, to a lesser, to a lesser extent, two to two and a half hours away, you've got. Bendigo and you've got Maryborough and well, you also got Adelaide. Adelaide's not that far, far away, away as well. Yeah. So I mean that serves there. And I mean as as what they pointed out on the on the night, the history of motorsport in that area with the Kellys and Darren Morgan and Cameron the Wargame Waters. Waters and Josh Waters and all those people, that area has a very rich history of of motorsport and but you know like the Perkins and all the rest of it. So it, it's going to be, a, it, potentially it's going to be huge. They've got a drag strip there, up there already, which is doing very well. That's where they're going to put the, the circuit in that whole area. And it makes it's going sense. to be fantastic. And it makes sense to, that, you know, for, for oftentimes there's been competition between the disciplines in motor racing, between speedway and drag racing and karting and circuit racing. I think what the kind of the pennies dropped here in the sense that to some people, our, the activity that we engage in, regardless of whether you do it in a straight line or roundy round or on dirt or on tarmac, the objections that people often have to it are the same. So if you're going to you know, work together to try to build something, you need to work together to try and build something yeah. because if one of you can overcome the objections, it can work for all of us. And if we pull our resources together and, and put those activities together, we might get cross-pollination drag racers who want to come watch some rallycross or some uh, some dirt carters that want to go and, and do and some driver training. And that used to be the strength of, of, of Calder Park. I mean, there exactly. were meetings um, where you had on the same meeting drag racing, rallycross and circuit racing all on the one meeting, uh, which was, which was and you had people like Alan Moffat rallycrossing and Peter Brock drag racing. Uh, it was fantastic. And, you know, it's, it's having spent, you know, most of the weekend out at Calder Park, it is so frustrating to see that, that venue um, it's still a great little drag strip and, and it's got a really good but gee it'd be good to see that some yeah. spend some money there but unfortunately I think Calder's probably 15 to 20 minutes sorry 15 to 20 years further down the track from Sandown the sense that Sandown is already surrounded by the city 
and it gets harder and harder to manage the noise and the access and obviously it makes it difficult to justify you know for the melbourne racing club investing in that facility to keep it going. Oh yeah, there's no ch there's no chance that's worth too much money. And then I think money. you've got to consider that Calder Park has housing rapidly approaching on all sides. Uh, you know, the freeway is there. It doesn't have any room to expand outwards. And if they were going to expand inwards, you'd want to have a long-term viability strategy yeah, in place. So I, I don't really see that. Whereas Mildura, greenfield site, lots of space to expand. Lots of space. And <laughs> support of the regional uh, of the regional council and make an investment in that community and you know draw people in the same way that we've talked about Newcastle drawing people uh, who might not have considered travelling to that part of Australia before. I think the Mildura proposal really does that because it, yep. it, it creates a, in the same way that Mildura is a regional centre uh, for agriculture and business, Business, it really draws it down in there uh, for um, for motorsport as well. Okay, we'll come back on that at the moment. I think we're coming back on that at the moment because Peter is, is giving me. I don't know if we've got anything on our. Patreon. What's that? We have Patreon. If yes, look at Patreon. Look, oh, look, look, Patreon. I don't know about Patreon really. Thank you to our two very lovely people uh, there, and they're both known to me. And I'm not allowed to mention who. Some of them are, but thank you to the people who have supported us on Patreon. I'm not sure what we're going to do with the Patreon thing. As I said, it would, um, in theory, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. One dollar twenty-five a week, and as I said, if, if all of the people who watch this program every week just gave us a dollar twenty-five, we'd be laughing. Um, do, I, do I look like I'm laughing? No, I'm not laughing. But uh, but anyway, that's what Patreon is. If you would like to go, go to patreoncom forward slash Lane, and for as little as five dollars a month, you can. Have help keep the program on air. Um, coming back, we've got this beautiful new studio. We've got a, you know, lots of exciting uh, places to, to sort of stream and to go in 2018. And we'd like to keep going if we could uh, into our 22nd year. But I mean, that's really down to you and down to sponsors and that sort of thing. We've uh, we've done it very tough this uh, this season, but a lot of the, uh, well, we'll go into that later when we wrap up. But uh, anyway, Patreon is out there and we'd like your support for that. Speaking of what's coming up. I'm going to give a quick plug now to Formula SAE, December 8, 9 and 10. It's one of the biggest things that RMITV does, student television. Uh, we will be out there for all three days of, of that event. Formula SAE, if you don't know, it's an engine, it's, it's, it's motorsport, but it isn't sort of. It's, a, it's an engineering competition where universities from all over Australia, New Zealand and right across the globe are given a brief to design a small open wheel race car for autocross competition within a limited budget. Outside of certain dimensional parameters and safety parameters, it's a blank book. They can just they piece up. They can just do what they want, and you'll see some of the most amazing innovation in anything. One of the things about you know, I got into motor racing because I love the engineering, and now we've got so many one make series and tightly controlled series. Even Formula One, you don't see the innovation you used to. If you want to see the sort of innovation you used to see in things like the Can Am or Formula One in the early 70s. Head out to Calder, the 8th, 9th and 10th, particularly the other 9th and 10th, and check out Formula SAE Australasia. If you can't get to Calder, make sure you're watching the In Pit Lane YouTube channel. And also, look, subscribe to the channel because that way you find out. You don't have to find things by, out by accident. You just, you will get a notification. You click on the notification and whenever we put something up, you get a little message saying, hey, in Pit Lane has put up a new video, or In Pit Lane is live from Calder, as we were on the weekend for the drag racing. So if you would, uh, if you would like to uh, do that, go to like, subscribe at In Pit Lane's YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash In Pit Lane. But let's go back to, uh, to the Newcastle 500. I take it we still don't have news. No, the news is dead. So unfortunately... It's not news anymore. It's, it's not it's news anymore. It's, it's old. old. It's old. It's the new, it's the new paradigm of, of media. Everything, it was five minutes ago. It's irrelevant That's now. That's not news. That's not news. No. So let's talk about what happened on the track and all of the controversy. There has been some absolute championship rubbish. Everyone on the internet is a driving standards advisor. Everyone has a, you know, decades of touring car mm. racing experience and knows exactly what a, a, a legal and not legal move is. Absolutely. The, the, Congratulations yeah. to you all. Send your submissions to uh, I can be the DSA at supercars.com.au. 
Yeah, I think, and some of the more bizarre ones, I mean, you know, there were, there were secret signals sent oh, to Oh, yeah, Craig just so you know, Leo. I work up in race control for Team Medical Australia. I don't have that hat on right now, so all of my opinions are my own and do not reflect those of the network. Uh, Team Medical Australia, Supercars Australia, the Confederation of Australian Motorsport, or 22 Speed. Uh, but no, I was up in race control and we did get the call from Roland Dane that we had to... No, we didn't. Stop being stupid. There is no conspiracy. We want to see good racing product. The reason that there had to be a call on the last lap is that a penalty that's issued during the race cannot be appealed. Cast your minds back to Bathurst 2016. They issued a black flag uh, post-race applied time penalty that could not be appealed to car... At that point, it was car uh, 88 because, of course... Uh, uh, Mark Winterbottom won the championship the year before. Jamie Winkup crossed the control line first, but he didn't win the Bathurst 1000. All you're seeing is exactly the same scenario played out. Yes, they could have gone to a post-race investigation, but Craig Baird, in conjunction with the stewards, looked at the driving, looked at it from multiple angles, and they deemed that that was reckless driving. And in this situation, I have to agree with them. Uh, th go think back to uh, some of the greatest drivers of the era. Rubens Barrichello and Michael Schumacher coming down the straight at Hung uh, Hungaro Ring. I think it was 2010, maybe 2011, when uh, Barrichello was in the Williams and uh, Schumacher in the Mercedes. Try to fit him in the fence. We're all, oh, my God, what's he doing? The fact that, you know, the wall might jut out a tiny bit or there's a hump in the road. I'm sorry. You know, I know Scotty didn't mean to do it, but at the end of the day, he did do it. And that's the thing about, I mean, like, as I've pointed out on the thing, some people have said, oh, yeah, like, you know, Craig obviously got the thing. Even, no. if, Craig, even if Craig had have got no, that, I mean, I've known Craig for 20 years. If, even if Roland had have got on some secret radio Craig, channel and said, Craig would, put it, would not in a million years even consider, he would say, Roland, get stuffed. He wouldn't would, have even considered it. Gary Rogers was interviewed in Pit Lane when Scotty was coming up behind Garth Tander, one of the hardest guys in Pit Lane to pass, and James Moffat. James Moffat's out of contract, getting the flick from GRM at the end of this year, and Garth Tender doesn't take team orders. J uh, Gary Rogers would have said to his drivers, if you want to let him pass, let him pass, but I'd prefer he earned it. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, you know, and then Scotty pulled off some great overtaking manoeuvres on them. But Craig Lowndes and the team in the 888 Caltex Team Vortex garage made the call the smartest call, they were towards the back end of the, of the lead lap. They bolted on fresh tyres at the last safety car and just drove through the field. Scotty played the, played the conservative game, stayed out, and Lansley caught up to him. So at that point, if he'd been on fresh tyres, he wouldn't have had that problem, but who knows what other problems they might have experienced. They might have got another speeding in pit lane penalty. Um, you know, and I wouldn't discuss that one. At the end of the day, it's a judge of fact thing, um, and it's determined by obviously the timing lines in the road. So there's there's no question about it. Um, I think the um, Scotty had that championship in the bag, and threw it away on three occasions. The speeding and pit lane thing didn't need to be risked. Uh, the 50-50 move on Simona, he didn't need to do it. He had the whole race to get up to 11th, and ruined a race and shout out to Simona Di Silvestro wow you impressed everyone when we leveled the playing mm. field and everyone had the same amount of tyres no one had ever been there before no one had any data she impressed and everyone was going around saying oh no you can't pass here Simona Di Silvestro showed us yes you can pass you can pass at turn one you can pass at turn two you can pass at turn seven you can pass at turn eight you can pass at turn eleven and, she, and she's also got that experience from IndyCar in yep. terms of doing a lot of that, that sort of you know, really tight street I mean, cars that are even faster than V8 supercars absolutely so yeah I mean we, we know that next yeah. year that when she goes back to, to all these circuits she's going to be that much faster yeah. now she's probably not going to win the championship but she's going to be that much faster and that much more competitive because at the moment you know they can't do a lot of testing every every track she's been to she only knows from you know on the, on the simulator yeah but just to finish off on the Craig Lowndes point when Craig Lowndes had that contact with Scott and then effectively DNF'd uh, that dropped him from six in the championship behind the five front runners who were still uh, in contention for the championship going into the final event that dropped him from six to tenth so regardless of what you think Craig was racing for Craig was racing for Craig Craig had had a pretty horrible year, uh, very sparse in the results in terms of top ten, you know, podiums and even top tens to an extent. Uh, he was racing to maintain sixth. You know, he'd had a crummy Saturday. He was looking to bounce back. Was on green tyres, had the speed, and you know, at the end of the day, Scotty didn't know he was there. 
He didn't mean to feed him into the fence. There was a hump in the road. I know there's a lot of contributing factors, but at the end of the day, that contact, that conduct and that contact was deemed to be reckless driving uh, and the appropriate penalty was applied. Also on the weekend, I think we should uh, just mention a few drivers, a couple of drivers sort of uh, have moved aside from full-time from full time competition, in particular Jason Bright and, uh, and Todd Kelly. Jason, as I said online, Jason was one of the very first guests on, on In Pit Lane 21 years ago. I'd been in contact in the very early years of the internet when nobody was on the internet. Jason was on the internet when he was racing in America. And I said, hey, listen, when you come back to Australia, I'm doing this new television show on Optus Vision. We'd love you to come on. And he was one of the earliest guests. He's been on a number of times. He and Lucy, lovely couple, lovely people. Um, he's done very, very well, not just on the track, but um, he's a smart operator. He's done very well for himself off the track as well. And um, I think it's really I think it's really great that he's a good decision to, to move aside now. Also, Todd Kelly, um, give him sort of time to, uh, to, to concentrate on getting that team structured for the future with whatever happens with Nissan. I mean, whether Nissan stays or goes, either way, he's got to be, he and his team have got to be prepared for it if they want to continue. So it, it, once again, yeah, two, very good, uh, two very good decisions. What's your take on both of those guys? Well, I think uh, obviously the end of the season then starts the which driver goes in which. We start playing the driver and, and even the racing entitlement contract shuttle game because uh, the news announcement on Thursday in the lead up to the event was, of course, uh, a change in the management structure at Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport. So they downsized from two wrecks down to one. Uh, Phil Monday, you know, a long-time supporter of the team, uh, moves in to take majority ownership. The team is rebranded as 23 Red. Uh, and, of course, Cameron McConville moves across with the restructuring of Zagami Autosport down from focusing on racing to focusing on customer track days. So Cameron starts to build up the 23 Red business as both a race team at supercars level. Uh, Carrera Cup with, the, with uh, Stephenson transferring up from GT3 Cup Challenge. So brand new programs for, for them for next year. The rumour, of course, is that Will Davison is moving away from Techno Autosport back down to Melbourne to race in uh, what's effectively a one-car LDM operation. Where that second LDM licence goes, it's rumoured that that one goes to ProDrive or possibly you know, that wreck is in, is in motion and, of course, Jason Bright's wreck. Uh, at the end of the day, we will end up with four cars at ProDrive. The fourth car, you can pretty much guarantee that's going to be Richie Stanaway, who was a standout performer of the Pertec Enduro Cup both this year and last year, of course, with that wet drive at Sandown. Uh, if you don't sign him now, you're going to lose him. And then, of course, we'll see one wreck hopefully head north to Queensland to Matt Stone Racing with the support of uh, Jason Gomisol and his, um, his iSeek and big mate businesses putting Todd Hazelwood on the grid. Uh, that's a dream come true for that young man who, of course, wrapped up the Dunlop Super 2 Series title uh, on the, uh, the Sunday afternoon. You've got Anton Di Pasquale signed at Erebus, and I know that Bruin Beasley and... and, um, and and Betty Clemenko and all the team, you know, Barry at Erebus are super pumped. They're going to have two competitive drivers and just watch Anton, you know, build himself up, build his confidence up in the main game. We've got uh, Bieber, um, James Golding coming into Gary Rogers Motorsport. So you've got the, the old hand in Garth, very sage, very wise, uh, still very, very competitive. And Biebs, who's proved himself both on the tools and in the Dunlop Super 2 Series, top performing wild card across the two events he entered into and acquitted himself very, very well in the, uh, in the Enduro campaign. Uh, and on top of that, um, we'll most likely see, um, we, we think that Andre Heimgartner was, is going to fill the seat vacated by Todd Kelly, which leaves a question mark of going, well, Jack LeBrock was, you know, earmarked that seat, has mm. done the season of Super 2 with Matthew White Motorsport in an Altima and obviously did the endurance campaign with Todd Kelly. Rumour is, and I bumped in on the Saturday night and he wouldn't let anything slip by us, you know, are you buying some more warm clothes to stay in Melbourne or are you buying a stand-up paddleboard and moving to Queensland? He said, no, no, I can't tell you. But uh, we suspect we'll probably see him in the, the seat at Techno Autosport in that car, in that, as part of that kind of fork four car, triple eight and customer operation. Which is what we need. We need to get young people in there because, I mean, there has been a bit of a sort of a, a damn wall it's there. It's been somewhat you know, stagnant. Yeah, no, it's, it's good to get some new faces in there because, Absolutely. let's face it, at the moment, until we see sort of, you know, like more of the, these newer cars with the newer engines come in, from a technical standpoint, and that's why you know, people say, oh, you don't like V8 supercars. Well, no, I don't because technically I find them really, really boring. I just find... But 
at least next year, we have some new young drivers. And drivers, most of the names that you've mentioned, like people like Anton and, and Jack LeBron and all those people, have been people that we've sort of been following on Inpit Lane who have been guests on this program for many for many years. And it's like going through, I mean, as I keep saying to people, you know, we had Mark Winterbottom on the show when he was 14 years old. We've had these guys. To see them coming through is really great, and that's something that we can all follow. And it gives us a, a bit of an interest uh, next year until we see you know, what's going to happen from a technical uh, standpoint. Look, thanks for going. Overall, um, out of 10, Newcastle 500? Look, I do believe in the culture of continuous improvement. I, I couldn't give it a 10. Full honesty, there were teething issues. As you would expect for any major event that's held the first time in, that, in a very condensed area, I've I got to give it a 9 out of 10. I'll give it an A. I'll be looking forward to giving you an A-plus next year. So, Kurt and all your team, mega event, very well done. Uh, they'll take anyone who was at the event, if you're watching, uh, or if you know anyone who went to the event, the organisers do really value your feedback. So, if you've got any comments about, you know, you're looking for better transport opportunities, or you, you know, feel that there needs to be better security at the concert, or, you know, you want a wider array of food and beverage, or you want there to be more ice cream out the back of the paddock area, I know I was um, hugely, hugely disappointed I couldn't pull a Kimi Raikkonen and go out in the middle of the hot session and go get an ice cream right out the back. Uh, but you know, Did they have pies? This is the argument I have with they the Australian... They had pies. They had Thank pies God. on the way in. And, of course, uh, the media centre was in the uh, in function room above the Customs Hotel. So, uh, no but was one... there a bar? Was it like Le Mans? I'm sure that some enterprising individual may have run some plumbing from the from the bar up to the function room if there was not already. Because I believe that because because we, we, when we went to Le Mans and they said, oh by the way, there's a bar upstairs, and we thought they were joking. They were not joking. The French Trust don't me. joke. They, no, they don't joke about things no. like that. And thank thank God for that. No. Vive la France. Yeah. Dave, thanks for, for joining us. Thanks for coming in uh, over the past few uh, few weeks and, and well, joining us. It was, me. It's been, been interesting to get that sort of inside uh, view because we, we're not allowed anywhere near V8 supercars. I mean, they don't, they don't like us because, you know, I don't particularly like them all that much. I'm glad James Warburton's going. Never particularly liked him. Horrible human being. Goodbye, James. Good riddance. James, thank, <laughs> on behalf of the officials, thank you very much for what you've done uh, to bring, bring, back bring, the, bring the sport. I think Tony's doing a great job uh, running a football team up in Queensland. No, so, he's not. No, no, Tony's doing a great job doing football. So, Tony, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, to James Warburton, uh, I think, you know, your efforts to salvage the sport uh, after the, you know, a couple of TV rights deals didn't go the way, thank you for keeping the, the, the racing entitlement contracts holders in the business. Uh, thank you for delivering on most of your metrics. Um, you know, best of luck in your next role. Um, and obviously, thank you for bringing your replacement on board. And yes, and, and we'll be in touch to buy some advertising on a bus shelter very soon. Now, now thank you, as I said, thank you to uh, thank you to, to Dave Stillwell, thank you to um, to Trent Price, to Lucy Slade, to uh, Nick Scarcella, to all of the people who have joined us, to um, to Lily, to Lily Price, who came in with her mum with Melinda and was our co-host for the night. Don't thank forget Mike Smith from Cam. Mike Smith from Cam. All of our guests who have come in over the past uh, over the past uh, thirteen weeks. Look, it, it was this was very much pulled. Together at the at the last minute because of all the uncertainty of surrounding general boy we're really swapping swapping between these cameras tonight. Um, <laughs> someone's got some somebody's got James. It's James's birthday, incidentally, our director's birthday. Happy birthday, James! Happy birthday, James! Yeah, look, James was and James was thrown in at the deep end with all of this and. He has swum. But he's the splash. birthday boy. He couldn't possibly make a mistake today. He, he, he couldn't he possibly. Anything that has gone wrong has absolutely nothing to do with James at all. So, um, so James, thank you very much for uh, for all your hard work over the past thirteen weeks. Thank you to the people who have supported us. Look, it, it has been very. It's been a very different sort of, sort of thing. Well, we are now over there. So, now, the, the, this, we're playing follow the camera now and follow the tally light. Thank you very much, and James. Stop it. <laughs> Um, yes, look, it has been, it's, it's, it was pulled together very quickly. We really enjoy being back. We, it is our intention to try and get back in 2018. But in order to do that, we really do need some support. Um, we've been very fortunate through RMITV Student Television, who have uh, basically allowed us to... Uh, allowed us to come back uh, on on air for this uh th so thank you very much i'm we're getting i'm getting rained with flowers but you can't see that because they haven't gone far enough <laughs>
<laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the members of the Academy oh. and... Yeah. Wonderful. <clears throat> I'll kill that cat. Now, um, anybody, we will um, see you, as I said, for Formula SAE in a couple of weeks' time out at Calder Park. We'll have a special edition of In Pit Lane on the Friday afternoon, um, hopefully with not as many camera changes. And we will also go <laughs> there by over, well, I'm earning my money tonight. I don't get paid a cent for this. Um, yes, we, we will we'll be uh, at Calder Park for all three days. We will have other things happening over the summer as well. If you saw our live stream from Calder Park on the weekend from the drags, also from Adelaide, we'll have uh, more live streaming coming up over the summer period. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we will be back in the studio. And by that time, all of the bugs will be driven away and we'll be able to, everything will work and we will be live back here on In Pit Lane. We might even head back to Channel 31 if Channel 31 is still around. Uh, that's, a, that's a big if. But anyway, thank you for joining us. I don't think we've got a, we did have music, but I don't think that's been ingested either. That, that's broken down as well. We, we, we do have all these people here. Look at all those wonderful people. Thank you. Thank wonderful person. people. Thank those people. Thank you very much for all of your hard work. We'll see you at Formula SAE and, of course, next year on In Pit Lane. Until then, au revoir.